This is a mandatory slide. Uh, this is uh, Mr. Jones. He's been in ICU for four days with severe sepsis. He's received a lot of fluids and developed severe fluid overload with high FiO2 requirements, uh, severe AKI, complicated by hyperkalemia and oliguria resistant to conventional treatment. Uh, Mr. Jones uh, has developed some of the complications that are usually referred to uh, conventional or absolute indications for RRT in the ICU guidelines. And the decision to start RRT in, in situations like this is not very controversial, usually not. But, in, but instead of waiting until life-threatening complications occur, we could, of course, start RRT earlier. That would give us the opportunity to maybe prevent fluid overload, to uh, control electrolyte and acid-base imbalances, and by doing so, maybe improve outcomes. There has been uh, quite a lot of uh, observational studies and also some small uh, randomized controlled trials that have compared early versus late RT in ICU patients. And especially the observational studies are showing that there is a trend towards benefit by, by starting the treatment earlier. Now, the, pr the problem with these studies, uh, especially the observational studies, is the fact that they are highly confounded by different illness severity in patients who receive treatment early versus late. Uh, another major problem is the use of very different cutoffs to define early and late. Uh, and, and in these older studies, they mainly used urea as, as the cutoff for, for this definition. Uh, and another aspect is the fact that they, these studies never included patients with equally severe AKI who never received RRT. Uh, luckily, in, in recent years, uh, the definition of acute kidney injury has become more uniform thanks to the Cadigo guidelines. And for example, they define moderate AKI, that is stage two, as a doubling of creatinine or oliguria for more than 12 hours, uh, whereas stage three is a threefold increase in creatinine or more severe and persistent oliguria. And these, um, these cutoffs, these definitions and, and uh, staging of AK has now been used in, in more recent trials to try to understand if, if early uh, treatment is better than, than uh, watchful waiting and late therapy. So in, uh, in 2016, we saw the publication of two randomized control, well-conducted trials in this field, the Akiki trial and the Elaine trial. Um, I will briefly summarize them now. The Akiki trial is a French uh, multi-center study uh, published in the New England Journal of Medicine. They randomized 620 patients with uh, Cadigo stage 3 AKI. Uh, they should be on mechanical ventilation or receive a suppressor support and, of course, they should not fulfill, fulfill any of the absolute indications for RRT. So they randomized patients to the early group uh, with the aim to uh, deliver RRT in this patient as soon as possible, or to a late group where RRT was delayed until the patients developed absolute indications, or if uh, oliguria persisted for more than uh, 74, uh, 72 hours. Um, this is a description of how they delivered treatment in the groups. And as you can see, uh, almost all patients in the early group actually received RRT. However, in the late group, about half of the patient never received the treatment because most of them recover their kidney function anyway during the course in ICU. Uh, those who did receive RRT uh, in the late group did so mainly because they um, uh, developed one or more of the absolute indication. 
the uh, median time from, from uh, randomization to RRT start was uh, two hours in the early group and 57 hours in the delayed group. The primary outcome was 60-day mortality. And according to this study, there doesn't seem to be any benefit to, to start RRT early. Um, Mortality was slightly below 50%, and they did not find any statistical significant difference between the, the two groups. They also present a number of secondary outcomes, uh, for example, dependence on RT day uh, 60, which was low in both groups, slightly higher in the late group, but without a, a significant difference. However, the incidence of catheter-related bloodstream infections was twice as high in the early group. Uh, the Elaine trial is a single center German study um, published in JAMA, also 2016. They randomized 230 patients, mainly post-surgical, uh, with Cadigo stage 2. Elevated NGAL level, which is a kind of a proposed biomarker of acute kidney injury, and they should also have severe sepsis, vasoactive support, fluid overload or worsening SOFA score. Uh, the aim in the early group was to start RT within eight hours uh, from randomization. In the late group, they delayed treatment until the patient developed Cadigo stage three, or an absolute indication, of course. Uh, now, the results from the uh, Elaine trial is very different from the Akiki trial. Uh, all patients in the early group received RRT, and most patients in the delayed group as well. Uh, the indication for starting RRT in the late group is also very different from the Akiki trial, that is, the majority of patients received RRT late because they developed Cadigo stage 3 instead of absolute indications or emergency indi indications. Uh, time to uh, treatment was 6 hours in the early group and 26 hours in the late group. So that there is just a 20, 20 hour time difference between the two groups, which is not a lot. Uh, and despite this, despite this, there is a significantly higher mortality in the late group. And looking at some secondary outcomes, uh, renal recovery uh, at day 90 was also significantly lower in the late group. However, when, when they specifically looked at survivors, they did not uh, demonstrate a significant difference. Now, the results from, the, uh, from Elaine and Akiki uh, have caused quite a lot of confusion, and it's really hard to, to use this data to inform clinical practice. And I'm just going to go through some of the reasons for this. First of all, the studies are quite small and, and severely underpowered to uh, detect plausible differences in mortality. Uh, the other reason is that they study different populations. There is a different case mix in the studies. Uh, and they use different cutoffs for early versus late CRT or RRT. Uh, uh, for example, in, in, the, uh, in the Lane trial, they used Cadigo stage 3 as, as the late start, whereas Cadigo stage 3 was the early start in, in the Akiki trial. That's confusion, confusing. Um, and again, the time difference varies a lot between the two studies. Uh, another important aspect is the fact that uh, patients in the Lane trial mainly received uh, continuous renal replacement therapy, whereas about half of the patients in the Akiki trial received intermittent dialysis as the first modality. And um, based on the current evidence and, and, and the recommendations, that may not be the treatment of choice in, in hemodynamically critically ill patients. 
another major problem with, with both these trials is the fact that they use fixed cutoffs for triggering RRT in the patients. And I think that um, most clinicians would actually not just look at snapshots, but rather the, the clinical, the broader clinical picture when they decide whether a patient should, need, uh, should require uh, RRT or not. Um, the other thing, if you look at um, if you look at some observational data, it looks like clinicians they they don't tend to to wait until severe life threatening complications occur before they start the therapy. So these two trials may not really reflect common practice and, and real life. So what, what I think most of us do instead when we decide upon the timing of RRT is to try to anticipate the, the trajectory of, of the kidney dysfunction and, and other uh, non-renal organ dysfunctions as well, um, to consider the solute burden and also to facilitate other supportive measures, such as the ability to uh, deliver adequate nutrition, uh, drugs and other fluids without running into problems with fluid overload. And there is a perception of benefit uh, that we are doing the patient good by, by cleaning the blood, by controlling the fluid balance and the electrolyte balance versus the risk of, of uh, uh, putting in a, a dialysis catheter and, and exposing the patients to, to that risk and to the risk of anticoagulation. And, and also the risk of uh, hemodynamic effects from the RRT treatment itself. Uh, fortunately, there are two larger ongoing studies. I think the ICU uh, has finished recruitment, but they haven't published the results yet. Um, it's the, the, they have included 864 patients. Uh, it's the, the same setup as the um, as the Akiki trial with, with Cadigo stage 3 as the entry criteria. And then there is the start, the ongoing start AKI uh, trial, which is a worldwide trial uh, aiming for almost 3,000 patients. They use Cadigo stage 2 as the randomization criteria, but they have added another uh, interesting aspect in, in this process as well. So which means that the treating clinician must confirm clinical equipoise before the patient is randomized into the trial. And the aim of doing so is to, um, to make sure that they in enrich the population, to make sure that they actually study patients that will most likely receive RRT during the course in ICU. So while we're waiting for these results, um, I would conclude that there is no, at this point, no strong evidence that early RRT will improve outcomes. Uh, but it may expose some patients to unnecessary treatment and risks associated with catheter, uh, catheter insertion, anticoagulation, hemodynamic instability, etc. Uh, and we need to continue to look at the timing based on patient's characteristics, including uh, CKD, uh, illness severity, and as usual, the trends in, in physiology and, and laboratory data. Thank you. Thank you, Johan. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience? Okay, so just one quick question then. Um, there was a, a mock article in British Journal of Anesthesia several years ago showing that we are anesthesiologists on call are really at risk uh, based on the urine output criteria. We, most of us met the uh, indications for <laughs> dialysis. Uh, so I think uh, one of the issues in all of this might be uh, a problem with the uh, definitions. Uh, how do you think we really should define early renal replacement therapy? That's that's the uh, that's a really tricky question. 
uh, as you can see, there has been a number of studies done in the field already, uh, and even with the definitions that we have, that, that they are not perfect, but they are there. Uh, the, the trialists uh, haven't been able to decide what to use. Um, I, I think the START AKI trial is a step in the right direction, where you actually you have to, you have to approach the, the clinician in charge of the patient and, and ask him or her, is this, is this feasible? Is this a patient that you believe is going to recover within the next couple of days? Um, is it futile to deliver the treatment? Or do you think that RRT will happen sooner or later? That's, that's, a, very, that's a very good aspect of that trial. Uh, but to answer your question, I think, I think we could potentially look at predictive models, maybe. Uh, one interesting study would be to look at the patients who are randomized to, to late RRT and look at, look at patient characteristics as well as novel kidney injury biomarkers, whatever that is, uh, to see if we are able to predict who will receive RRT in the end and, and where, in which patient will the treatment be unnecessary. I think that's what we can start doing because I haven't, I haven't seen any such models being presented.